Okay, this is Happy Mother's Day, and this will be a little bit of a tribute to my mom. I just sort of learned how to do this stuff this past year. Um, so this is my mom, uh, Olga. She was super nice. She's like a modern-day saint. And the most characteristic thing of the people who know her is you see how... Here, let me put my picture... Oh, crap. Um, I'm trying to move one picture, not the other. I'm trying to get myself out of here. But anyways... The most characteristic thing of the people who knew her was she was always joking around and funny. And here's one of the grandchildren. She actually helped take care of this baby uh, when this baby was sick and young. Um, and um, this is one of the babies that she helped take care of. Everybody was always laughing when my mom was around. She was always cracking jokes. And the way this baby's kind of laughing in delight, that was what it was like hanging around my mom. She's like a modern day saint and a comedian combined into one. Now here's the family story going back. The grandfather, my mom's dad, was this guy, and he was known as a genius. He was known as the genius of the island of Puerto Rico, the smartest man in all of Puerto Rico. He's fluent in six languages. He was a merchant marine captain who sailed all over the place. Here's my mom's mother. You know, she's older in this picture than he is in this picture, but the gist of it was she found out that he had another family, at least one other family, maybe he had two other families, on another island as he's traveling around as a merchant marine, and she went apeshit bananas. You know you know the Tiger Woods story when his wife found out that uh, he was fooling around? Well, when she found out, she went crazy. I don't know all the details of what happened, but I know that it was such a bad scene that he never came back. So he basically abandoned the family, which was bad. They were super poor. My mom actually is pissed off at him to this day. She kind of hates him. She didn't even go to his funeral, which I was amazed by. Um, but... Let me, oh, I can't get my picture out of here. Uh, so anyways, here's the reason I'm showing you this picture. This was a theater, the Olympic Theater, and this little tiny poor place. My mom and her brothers and sisters, you know, many of them worked there, you know, minimum wage job when they were kids to get some money. They were so poor, they lost their house. They had to go live with another relative who lived on a farm, and they lived in the barn. Literally, they, my mom grew up living in a barn where the animals did. That's how poor they were. Um, and... Uh, but they were remarkably bright. and um, But my mom will have a special thing like this theater. Her growing up in a theater, my mom was the kind of person who she just cared about what was right for people. She really didn't care about rules. She would break rules and she would be mischievous all the time. Like she would take us to a movie when we were kids and she would tell us to lie about our age. She didn't really want us to lie about our age. We had plenty of money then from my father, but she just thought it was funny. And she would like tell me like, let's say I'm... Uh, I'm 12, and you, you get lower fare if you say you're 11. She goes, say you're 11. I go, no, Mom, I'm not going to do that. She goes, say you're 11. Don't be a chicken. I go, no, Mom, I'm not going to do that. I know it sounds silly and stupid, but the point of it was that every little thing you did with her, going to a movie or whatever else, it always turned into an adventure with a lot of joking and laughing. And, and I wouldn't lie, but she was just having fun with me, and uh, she used to always do that kind of thing. There was some movie. I forgot, I forgot the name of it, but... Uh, it's along those lines here. Okay, there, now I can move myself out of the picture a little bit here. Okay, so she was uh, Queen of Canovanas, her little town when she was uh, growing up. And here she is married to my father. This is their wedding picture. These are giant priests, They're like the biggest priests I've ever seen in my life. There's my dad, there's my mom. The light coming overhead, she almost looks like a halo. And they were very happily married. They were very good to each other, both of them, the whole the whole life. They had a great marriage. And that's one of the reasons why I was 100% set on getting married and having a big family just like my parents, you know. It was the greatest life you could imagine. We were all happy. We, I mean, every family has some ups and downs, but we were happy and joking around and laughing all the time. And my mom ran the whole family. You know, my father worked. She stayed home with the kids. And it, it worked out perfect that way. There was no competition or arguing. Everybody knew what everyone was supposed to do. Uh, here's my mom and my dad. You know, they smoked and they didn't know any better. Um, some of her family members. Her family was, like I said, super smart. Um, it's like half of them are doctors or PhDs. This is one of my mom's sisters. She had a PhD in nutrition. And that was good because we always ate reasonably well. They always had fruits and vegetables on the table. Carrots, celery, you know, apples, pears. So me and my brothers were all real athletic and strong. My sister was real athletic and strong too. She ended up hurting her knee, but uh, this is me with two of my brothers here. 
I just show you this because my brothers are really good looking and I would never introduce a girlfriend. I would never want a girlfriend to see my brother unless I either didn't want her or I had slept with her because as soon as they would see my brothers, they go, oh my gosh, your brother is so gorgeous. And that means she likes my brother. Uh, so that's what it was like growing up with uh, brothers like that. That was another picture of my grandfather, the bicycle guy. Okay. Um, my parents played tennis and that was a really good thing for him. It made him happy and gave him something to do and talk about. They had a lot of friends at the tennis club and that kind of kept them healthy. I think it's the best sport, tennis. You can do it your whole life and enjoy it. This is just a typical thing. She came out, visited me at Stanford and we went to the, I think the duck pond somewhere. She was always goofing around and cracking jokes and she was really funny. Kind of a little like Roseanne Barr, but a lot nicer, but you know, clever and funny in that way. Mischievous, clever and funny all the time. Um, here's a typical thing she'd always do. She's always adopting people. This is one of our cousins, and this is the son of her sister. My mom's sister, Irma, uh, was married. She's a really brilliant lady. She's like teaching physics at the college when she's in her early 20s. And then her husband cheated on her, despite the fact they had a bunch of kids. Like, I don't know if it was seven kids yet by that time, but close to that. And so this is one of her sons, and that's, that's my older brother. That's me on the horse. And she just adopted him as long as he wanted. He lived with us and like an older brother. And whenever people had problems, any friends of the family, sometimes even my dad's patients, if they, if there was a problem, as long as people wanted, they'd always just live at our house. So we a lot of times had other people living at our house. Uh, these are some girls that lived at our house for a while. You know, my mom would just adopt them. And there was other girls too. I don't even know their pictures. Um, um, and she was more of a friend and she later was very close to my friend, my brother, of course. But the reason I show you this is that's what my mom was like. She says, you need a place to stay, you stay at our house. And people could stay at our house for a day, a week, a month, a year, two years, three years, whatever was necessary, she would do it. That's what I meant by she would always just do whatever was right for people. We had one of our relatives that had a problem with alcoholism. My mom just brought her to our house, detoxified her. My dad was in charge of an alcohol and drug detox. He's a psychiatrist guy. But my mom would run it. They'd be in our house. My mom would just do it for free for friends, family, relatives. That's what it was like. And that was a good way to be. She was always doing right by people. And then again, here's here's you know one of our family reunion pictures with some of the, the family members. Like I said, half of the people in this picture are you know MDs or PhDs. They're real smart. So that's why I always think it's funny. Like people say, oh, you're Puerto Rican or they think you're stupid or something. Oh, <laughs> you would be surprised, okay? I laugh too uh, when people sometimes say stuff like that to me. Like my when I first started my residency at Northwestern, one of the attendees goes, oh, our first Puerto Rican resident. He goes, I better watch my hubcaps in the, in the parking lot. And I just laughed. I was like, I'm going to be the smartest resident in this entire program of any age, maybe ever that attended the place. You just wait. So I always thought that was funny. But anyways... Um, her family's super nice. I wish we lived next to Puerto Rico. I wish I lived there. It's all warm and nice and they're real nice. The Puerto Ricans are smarter than the Irish in my family, but the Irish are more bookish, more literary. They just sort of want to get a job and work, whereas the, the Irish like to talk and fuss a lot more about books and stuff. These are just some of the things my mom used to do. She was like, on all this like board of directors of an orphanage, Minister of Care with the Church, tour guide in the Art Institute, Frank Lloyd Wright Studio. She's like champion of doubles at the tennis club. She ran the whole family. She made everybody get along and she'd make everybody get together. Without her, when my mom died, the family kind of fell apart. All the young wives work, so they're all tired and exhausted and they just sort of want to be with their own family versus my mom, because <clears throat> she didn't have to work. Her life was the family. She pulled everyone together. She's a big matriarch of the whole family. And it was a lot better that way. Kids get to know their cousins and stuff. When she got cancer, um, you know, she did everything she could. And I think she did everything right that you could do from a social point of view. She exercised a lot. She did all these good activities helping people. She made a religious pilgrimage to Medjugorje. I'm the dummy that didn't know about this nutrition stuff. That was many, many years ago. You know, I was just a you know medical student. I didn't know. I just sort of assumed you sent her to the cancer doctor. And the cancer doctors did the best they could. But all they knew was chemo, which isn't that much, you know, especially now for colon cancer. Um, so, you know, she lived. They only gave her two years, but she ended up living almost 11, close to 12 years. So I just, I just regret I didn't know what I know now. I think I might have been able to really help her a lot. Um, here's a typical story. One of her grandchildren was born, you know, premature. My mom just went over there, was over there, and uh, just lived there, you know, whatever, for like six months taking care of the baby, you know, because so the mom would, you know, helping out the mom, okay? And uh, that's just typical of what she would do. Here's another thing, typical uh, story of my mom. 
one of her grandchildren was born and born in septic shock. The mother didn't know any better. She went in a hot tub. Her water broke. It got infected. The baby's born in septic shock. Mama's in septic shock. She's on a ventilator in the ICU, so she can't help the baby. My mom goes in there. This is the time when she's dying of metastatic uh, colon cancer with diffuse lung metastases. She's coughing up blood from the lung metastases. She's hiding it in the garbage can so the nurse doesn't kick her out of the, out of the uh, ICU. What had actually happened is the baby initially was in a, born in a private practice hospital. Then we transferred the baby to a children's hospital. You know, they're asking me what to do. I don't know what to do. I take care of adults. I don't really know much about kids. They're like little outer space aliens. So the kid was in a good neonatal intensive care unit. And But the point I'm making is the doctors did a fantastic job. They had to put the child on ECMO, and the corporeal membranous oxygenation, which is a heart-lung bypass machine. And the doctors did a fantastic job with all this complex, high-tech medical stuff. But you need both. If it was just the doctors, the kid would have died. Um, if it was just my mom alone, the kid would have died. You need both. And so what my mom did was, you know, she had her statue of St. Jude. She's very religious. She's super religious. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so impressed by religion. I saw what it did to my mom. She had energy levels off the charts. And she was the nicest person you'd ever meet. She was a saint in the modern terms. Everybody loved my mother. Like, for example, I didn't really like tennis as a sport when I was young. I was a tough guy, a wrestler. My dad had been a boxer. I was kind of like my dad, student athlete, tough guy, okay? And so... I kind of thought, you know, I'm a wrestler. Tennis is for wimps and sissies. Why would I care about tennis? So it was, you almost would never catch me going to the tennis club. But once in a while, I would maybe have to go there, you know, drop somebody off or, get, or go talk to my mom or something. I go to the tennis club and, you know, I'd maybe been there once in five years. People go, it's Olga son. It's Olga son. All these people will walk up and they want to introduce me. We love your mother. We love your mother. We love your mother. That's what it was like uh, being her son. Um, same thing at parties. They, they would talk to me like that. Uh, so anyways, so here she is, you know, she moves in with this baby in the intensive care and, for, and here she is, she's dying of metastatic cancer, coughing up blood multiple times a day, hiding it from the nurses and she knows this baby needs her and she's with the baby, I love you, I'm with you, you are going to be okay and so what she did was, you know, she lowered the child's um, stress level, she's holding his hand while they're drawing blood from the baby, doing other invasive painful procedures and the kid lived, the, kid did, the kid's doing great, the kid graduated college, he's, you know, an honor student, he's doing fantastic so what I'm trying to say is, that's the combination of best care when you've got the medical knowledge and expertise, but you have to combine it with the love and kindness. And love and kindness are kind of absent from the modern medical system, and that's why the outcomes are so crappy. Um, you need this sort of thing. You need both. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's lots of good doctors and nurses, but medicine itself is drifting away from this type of uh, loving, close attitude. It's a long story. We're not going to get into all that right now. But anyways, if it wasn't for my mom, this kid would have died. Uh, I, did, I thought the kid was going to die. Everybody that knew anything about it thought the kid was going to die. Here she is with the baby. You know, she saved this kid's life. Um, and she saved the lives of many other people in many other ways. So anyways, that's a tribute to my mom. We love your mom. So anyways, there it is. Happy Mother's Day.